The following is a class on the Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, eighth chapter, text number 46, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on the 8th of May, 1973, in Los Angeles, California. Translation, King Yudhishthir, who was much aggrieved, could not be convinced despite instructions by great sages headed by Vyasa and the Lord Krishna himself, the performer of superhuman feats, and despite all historical evidence. So, Maharaj Vidhishti was very much agreed. He was thinking, Vishnu, that I am a petty king, and for giving me the throne, so many people have been killed. But that is the greatest war within the recollection of five thousand years. Kurukshetra, battle of Kurukshetra, the, what is this figures? See, what is the statistics of the last war? How many people died? Is there any statistics? Uh, two million. And, huh? Eh? Last what? Oh. Uh, six hundred forty? Uh, so which is greater? <laughs> Hare Krishna. Uh, it's zero. It's the business of zero. <laughs> it add or subtract. <laughs> So anyway, a very large number of people died, and Yudhishthira Maharaj, because he is Vaishnava, although he has Khatriya, Khatriya's business is to keep himself in power, even by killing his own son, that is Khatriya. Khatriya, when there is question of fight, just like Bhishma Dev. Bhishma Dev, grandfather of Arjuna, very affectionate grandfather, because the Pandavas, Yudhishthir Maharaj, Bhim, Arjuna, Nakul, Sahade, when their father died, they were small children. Naturally, Bhishma is the grandfather of the family, and he had to take care to raise the children. On one side his grandfather, and he actually raised the children. So very affectionate, especially fatherless. And the daughter-in-law, Kunti, was so helpless because this Dhritarashtra and his family, they were trying always to kill these Pandavas. And Vidu and Vishnu, they they were giving protection somewhere or other. So still, although so much affection, when the war was declared, Vishma Dev took the side of Duryodhana. He did not take the side of Pandavas, although they are very affectionate, beloved. He replied that this side, Dujyadhan, they are maintaining me. I am maintained by them. So I cannot go against them. That is not possible. Naturally, Bhishma they would have come to the side of Pandavas because very affectionate. But he said that that is not possible because I am maintained by them. This is the duty. If somebody maintains you, you must be very much grateful to him. These are the examples, Vedic culture. He is not maintained by anyone. But because he had no claim on the kingdom, he was thinking himself that I am dependent on this family. Actually, the kingdom belonged to Bhishma the kingdom. But he promised 
His father wanted to marry Satyavati. At that time, his father was old enough. Bhishma Dev was grown up boy, twenty, twenty-two years. But nature, his father wanted to marry again. Bhishma Dev is the son of Mother Ganges. Bhishma Dev's father married the predominating deity, Mother Ganges, of the Ganges water. So she was very beautiful. So she agreed to marry Bhishma Dev's father on one condition. What is that condition? That all the children that will be begotten, they will be thrown in the Ganges water. This is the condition. If the king agreed, then she would marry. So when a man becomes mad after woman, so he agrees, yes, I shall throw all the children. No, no. Come on. Maya Mahita. Maya Sukhaya Bharamud Bhato Bhimura. This whole world, rascal world, they are captivated by this omen. Woman is captivated by man, man is captivated by woman. This is the tie here in this material world. Tumsham Sriya Mithani Bhava Mitha. I have explained several times. The whole material existence means this attraction. Jana Mithana Adi Griha Mithi Sukham Mitucham. There are so many instructive verses. Here, sex. Enjoyment is the most prominent, and people are captivated by this. This is life. So anyway, even the father of Bhishma, he was captivated. So this was the condition. So in this way, every child was being thrown in the Ganges water. So Bhishma, when Bhishma was going to be thrown in the water, he objected, no, I cannot allow. I cannot allow. Then I am going, now you can go. I shall kill this child. So Ganges, Mother Ganges left Vishma's father, and Vishma was raised by his father. He became grown up. Again, this father became captivated with Sattvati. Sattvati, Sattvati, before her marriage, Sattvati is the daughter of a fisherman. The fisherman, in your country there is such a distinction, but in our country there are classification. A fisherman, there is a class. So they are girls and women, very well figured, very enchanting figure. So Sattvati was the daughter of a fisherman, and Bhishma's father became enchanted. So he went to the fisherman. He was king. So give me your daughter, I shall marry. Uh, oh, you are already married, you have got son. Uh, why shall I give my daughter to you? No, I am king, I shall maintain her. <laughs> No, no, I don't want to be. In India still, if a man wants to marry and if he has got children by his former wife, people will hesitate to give him daughter because there are stepsons. So nobody wants that my daughter will be troubled by the stepson daughter. No, it's still that practice. To marry for the second time becomes a problem. But nowadays these things have gone. So the grown-up son, Bhishma Dev, he understood that my father is inclined to marry that girl. And so he went to lead canvas. 
So why don't you give your daughter to my father? No, no, I cannot give my daughter to your father. You are his son. He will inherit the kingdom. Uh, my daughter's son will not inherit, so how can I give my daughter? So he said, I will not uh, accept the kingdom. I promise that your daughter's son will inherit the kingdom. No, no, no. Still I cannot. Why? Now he will marry, then your son will be inheritor. My grandson will not be inheritor. He was calculating that way. Pakka businessman. <laughs> so he promised that you give your daughter to my father and I promise that I shall not marry. So there will be no son. So naturally my stepmother's son will inherit the kingdom. Then he agreed. So Bhishmadev's father, although it was little shameful that the son is canvassing for the marriage of father, still he could understand that my son is so sensible that I wanted to marry and he has managed. So he gave him one benediction. My dear son, he will remain brahmachari, I can understand, but I give you one benediction that unless you desire to die, you will never die. Ichamitra. This benediction you will have. Unless you desire that now I shall die. Nobody can kill you and you will never die. And because he promised so seriously, that I shall not marry. He gave up his kingdom, therefore his name is Bhishma. Bhishma means very serious. So this Bhishma Dev actually maintained the whole Pandava family. That means Pandava, the Pandava and Yudhishthi and Pandu, they are the sons of the stepmother. And because Bhishmadeva was elderly son, practically he maintained even Yudhishthira, yes, Dhritarashtra and Pandava. And then again Pandu, he died, his sons, this Pandava, Yudhishthira, they are also uh, raised by Bhishmadeva, so much affection. But when there was question of fight, so Bhishmadeva fought so severely that Arjun had to be protected by Krishna. Krishna, they, you know, in Mahabharata these stories are there. Vishma has actually had some affection. So Vijayadhan thought that my grandfather is not fighting properly because the other side is beloved grandson. I am also grandson, but I am not so beloved. But the other side, Pandavas, because they are fatherless, he has more affection for them. So he is officially fighting. He is not fighting with his real vigor. He complained that. But actually that was the fact that, my dear grandfather, you are not fighting with Arjun with your full vigor. I can understand that. Huh? I am not fighting. So what do you think? Now I want that you decide to kill them all tomorrow. You can do that. All right, I shall do that. If you are doubting about my fighting, then I shall. So he made a special five arrows to kill the five brothers next. So Durjadhan asked his grandfather that let me keep these five arrows with me. I shall deliver you tomorrow morning. Otherwise it may be missing. So all these things, Krishna is Paramatma, He knows everything. So He th- saw that there is danger tomorrow. Now Vishnu has decided to kill all these Pandavas. So He asked Arjun, Arjun, you just go approach Dujyadhan this evening. 
Formerly the practice was daytime there is fight, but in the after evening they are all friends. After evening they are friends. One can go this camp, that camp, and talk together, speak together, just like friends. There is no enemy. So, Dujjadhan sometimes promised to Arjun that I want to give you some benediction. You can ask. So Arjun said, Dujjadhan was elder than Arjun. I will ask you in proper time. So Krishna reminded that tonight you go to Dujjadhan and ask him to deliver those five arrows kept in secret. Otherwise tomorrow you will be finished. So Dujjadhan went to, Arjun went to Dujjadhan in the camp. Dujjadhan received him well. Come on, brother, what do you want? He thought that we are fighting. Arjun has come to break the kingdom without fighting. So they are so liberal. He said, yes, come in. If you want the kingdom without fighting, I am prepared. But Khatriya will never beg. Uh, give me time with us. No. If they can own by fighting, then they will claim. This is Chatriya spirit. So he said that, no, I have not come to beg the kingdom. We shall fight, go on fighting. But I want those five arrows you have kept. Uh, immediately deliver. Although you are very cautious that these five uh, arrows may not be missing, but promise is promise immediately he delivered. So Bhishma understood later on that the five arrows were taken by Arjuna, by tree. So he still he promised that even without those five weapons, today I shall kill Arjuna. Unless Krishna gives his special protection to Arjuna, there is no escape. Either Krishna has to break his promise, otherwise his friend will be killed. So Krishna finally joined Arjuna. He said that he would not fight. I can help you simply by become your chariot here, but I cannot fight. Because the purpose was that Arjuna was to gain the fight. But if Krishna would fight, people would say, but Krishna owned the fight, not Arjuna, that we avoided fight. It was sure Krishna fights or not fight, because he was on the side of Arjuna, it, is, it was sure that he would gain the battle. That is explained in the Bhagavad Gita. Jatra Yoga Sarohari. Where there is Krishna, the victory is assured. So in this way there is fierce fighting between Arjuna and Vishnu. And Arjuna's chariot became broken into pieces and he fell down. And when Krishna saw, that now Arjuna is going to be killed, he broke his own promise. He broke his own promise and took one wheel of the chariot and reached before Bhishma, that now I shall kill you. Bhishma immediately gave up his weapon. So that was my promise. That I wanted that either you have to break your promise or your friend will be killed. So now you have broken your promise, so I am giving up. Because it is not expected that I shall fight with you. <laughs> so uh, Krishna said that, yes, I have kept your promise, but I have broken my promise. You decided, you promised. So uh, this is Krishna's business. So Bhishma was a devotee, great devotee of Krishna. So, he promised that either Krishna would break his promise, other his friend will be dead. So uh, he broke his promise. So sometimes Krishna breaks his promise, own promise, for the sake of his devotee. 
the body is expected to break his promise, but Krishna is so kind, for protection of his devotee, he can do anything, he can break his promise also. This is Krishna's position. So such Bhishma was so affectionate to the Pandavas. So Krishna wanted, Bhishma was lying on the bed of arrows preparing for his death. So Krishna wanted that these Pandavas should go to Bhishma and hear his instruction. Therefore, despite his advice to Maharaj Yudhisthi, so there was no wrong on your part. You are thinking that you have killed, or for your sake so many men have been killed. Then that is not, you are not responsible for that. You are not sinful. For a khatriya, killing is not sinful. For a brahmana, uh, sacrificing an animal in the arena, that is not sinful. It is all explained in the Bhagavad Gita. Padosam mapinattaje. Killing is bad. But a Kshatriya's business is to kill. Without killing, one cannot become perfect Kshatriya. Because he has to give protection, and there are so many demons, rustles. Then the king becomes non violent. How other citizens will be given protection? No. King's business is as soon as he sees one undesirable element, immediately he kill. That is real protection. Just like when Parikhit Maharaj was going on two, he saw one black man was trying to kill a cow. He immediately saw, who are you? You are trying to kill cow in my kingdom? I shall kill you. He immediately took out his soul. This is king. Not that animals should not be given protection, only man should be given protection. No. Praja. Praja means one who has taken birth in the kingdom. That is called praja. So animal is also American. Man is also American. But there is no protection for the animal by the government. That, that kind of government, rascal government, was not there. Equal that. Yeah, your country says equality given. Why not equality to the animals? That is defect. Uh, it is due to hmm, the absence of Krishna conscious. A Krishna conscious person will not distinguish like that. For eating animal, they will philosophize. Then animal has no soul, therefore it can be killed. No. This is nonsense. Everyone has got soul. Even a small ant has got soul. But they have to kill, they have to eat, they are philosophizing different ways. Lord Jesus Christ said, Thou shalt not kill. And now they are interpreting. Killing means murder. But that is not in the Bible. So they are manufacturing their own ways of understanding Bible and ethical principles. Therefore it is, it is becoming valueless. It is becoming valueless. No value. One cannot change the words of the authority. If you believe in Lord Jesus Christ, you cannot make any change to your convenience. This is as good. You cannot be a Christian if you violate the orders of Lord Jesus Christ. But they are doing so. Now the Christian priest, we had a meeting in Sydney. One priest asked me, what we have done that they are not any more caring for us? I told him that you are always violating the Ten Commandments and you say what you have done? Lord Jesus Christ says, Thou shalt not kill, or you are killing, expert in killing, and you are still Christian. So you cannot understand what you have done. You have always misguided people. I told you. So he was not very happy to hear this straight <laughs> answer. 
But he had admitted anyway. So for Khatriya, just like Maharaj Parikhi, if Khatriya becomes non-violent, just like our Mahatma Gandhi started non-violence in politics. So that was a political policy, but in politics there is no question of non-violence in politics. That is foolishness. Actually, India gained independence not by non-violence. There is a great history. India gained independence. Gandhi was fighting with non-violence. For thirty, thirty-five years there was no result. But one of the leaders, when he, I was say, ensued fighting, then within, I think, within one year the British has left. So in politics there is no question of non-violence. So a king, protector, kshatriya, kshatriya means khat, khat means injury, injury, and Tra. Tran means deliver. The Khatriya's business is to deliver a person who is going to be injured. That is Khatriya. Just like this cow was going to be injured, and as soon as Maharaj Parikhe saw it, he immediately took his soul to kill him. So this is Khatriya. Therefore, Khatriyas are allowed to go in the forest and kill some animal because he has to practice. So, so what kind of animal? Not the cows or simple animal. He must kill one tiger, one lion, one jungle boar, ferocious, very ferocious animal. That was the Khatriya's business. Not that a rabbit <laughs> or an innocent bird. Uh, sports. This kind of sport he must not allow. If you want to kill, you must kill one rhinoceros. Uh, then one can understand that you have power of killing. Uh, that's what I used to do. Even, uh, say, twenty-five years ago, Maharaj Jayapur, he used to go into the forest every year and he would fight with a tiger. Simply with a sword. Simply with a sword. He would fight with the tiger in the jungle and he was so expert he would kill. And then the tiger would be brought in procession, in royal procession. Because the king used to say, this tiger is the king of forest. Or the lion is the king of the forest. I am also king. So after his death, there must be a royal reception. So this was the function of Vega. So khatriya means they used to kill, practice. Unless they practice, how they can kill? And now our, our president, they practice only smoking. That's all. <laughs> That's all. And when there is fight, he is in the chamber, uh, safety chamber. Rather say, the poor boys, they are called by the dead poor and go and fight. This is not chhatri. These are sudras. Chhatriya, when there is fight, the king must come forward first. The other part is king also. The king will fight with king and the soldiers will fight soldiers according to position. And when the king is killed, then victory is over. It, it doesn't require that all the soldiers must be killed. No. So there are many. This is actually Vedic culture. You will find all this from Mahabharata. Bhagavata also we are trying to explain as far as possible. The Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Sudra, this is natural division. So for fighting, Khatriya. In India, because still there are some Khatriyas, there is no such draft board. The Kshatriya class, they would come forward to be recruited by the military department. They would not go away. They would be very glad to access military service. 
because in that blood the Chhatriya spirit is there. So in India there is no scarcity uh, to find out fighter. But when people are trained as Sudra, how we can fight? Therefore it is very scientific. Chaturvannamaya system gunakarma vibhaga. So the society must be divided. There is division already, natural. We have to simply pick up. This bar is Brahmana, this bar is Kshatriya, this bar is Vaishya, and this bar is Sudra. So they should be given separate employment. Then there will be peace. He, a person is employed according to his natural tendency. He becomes Sakri. He becomes Sakri. But if you give some employment, just like to put a cart before a horse, like that. No, that will not be successful. Therefore, Krishna says that you can say that there is no need of Khatriya, let there be all Shuddhas. No, then there will be social scandal. Everything must be there. The Brahmana must be there, the Kshatriya must be there, the Vaishyas must be there, and the Shuddhas must be there, and the state should look that these things are observed scientifically and they are being educated in that way, that is king's business. You must see that the kshatriyas, uh, those who are kshatriya spirited, they are being trained up as kshatriya, the brahmanas are being trained up as brahmana. Everything is equal, just like in your body. All the four divisions, that is the head, that is brahmana, the arms, that is kshatriya, the belly, the, that is vaishya, and the legs, that is sudra. So, as much as the head is required, as so much as the legs are also required. You cannot say one class will do. No. But the modern tendency is one class of man, and therefore there is confusion. There must be four classes. That is scientific. So our Krishna consciousness movement is trying to educate some brahmanas. If the society takes our help, and conduct the business of the society, Chatriya, Vaishya, Sudra, then there will be peace and prosperity. Otherwise there will be chaos and confusion.